Well, Uncle Sam, when I turned 18, he took me right out of high school. And uh, that was in March, uh, in February. February 25th, I turned 18. March 12th, I took the oath of office and was gone. Went to boot camp in 43. They shipped us up to San Francisco and the USS Chester come around from being repaired, from being torpedoed. I went aboard and I served the next three years on board the Chester, all over the Pacific. We had our missed calls. Torpedo, we missed, had three misses on torpedoes while I was on shore. <laughs> had one plane fly right over us. He didn't do nothing, so we shot him down. Well, I, it was during the middle of the day, and we had our anti-aircraft guns was manned all the time. And he come flying over us. Well, our number two five-inch gun started firing at him, and the fourth round brought smoke from his engine, so we know he was hit. Meantime, they had called Tenny in, which is right off of Saipan, for a fighter plane to come up and get him. Well, he, he flew him all the way down to the end of Okinawa, uh, Okina I mean, uh, Saipan there. But when he got there, he didn't shoot him down. The jet pilot bailed out of his plane. He was floating down the parachute. And there he goes, just a tumbling. So that was one of the high incidents that we had during the war. I was on an 8-inch gun. I was, a, I was a primer man on an 8-inch gun. I had a blank 45 70 and I put it in a little breach on the big breach when it opened up and then when it closed when it was ready to fire they fired that blank 45 into the powder and that's what what, blowed it, what made the gun go off. Inside you couldn't hardly hear it but outside it was real high. I was putting up everything in our gear locker from being fired. And I heard the guns loading up there and I thought, well, they're going to fire one of those eight inch guns again. And I stepped out on deck and sure enough, they fired number two right over my head. <laughs> Blew me down on the deck, covered me up with black smoke. I couldn't hear for three days. <laughs> we had, uh, like I said, we, had, we got missed by torpedoes three times. We said, uh, Ulithia told, fixed to go out on the morning patrol, and they opened the torpedo gates and started out. Torpedo come, come through and just missed us and hit the fleet tanker down in the, in the harbor. The destroyer, which is there, he rammed that submarine and they lost two men on it because they knocked a hole in the forward magazine of that little destroyer. So we went on to where we was going. I don't know where we headed that morning. But uh, at daylight, at, at noon that day, you could look back and see a column of smoke over the horizon back there in that fleet tanker. Now, on one of our next episodes, we were going to join with a convoy I had to attack some big island that we had over there. And I was on the lookout, and I saw the torpedo broach when it was fired, and I reported it. And all the ships turned, and it went down between us and disappeared. And the captain called me up and congratulated me on being a good lookout. <laughs> that, that's all I got out of it. <laughs> About say about two weeks or so before the attack on Iwo, we escorted a, a ship up there with frogmen on it. And while we bombarded that day, well, the frogmen went in and surveyed all the beaches for troops to land on, on D-Day. And then we come back to Iwo, and then the ships all started gathering up for D-Day. D Day, the night before D Day, well, the frogmen went in there again. We escorted them back up there and they surveyed, make sure there wasn't nothing else. And then D Day morning, well, we got rammed by another ship and the 
smoke screen didn't damage it too bad. And the Marines, all the Marines landed that day. We lost 4,000 Marines that morning, that morning. And then that night, there was a Japanese plane come in to uh, land on the airfield, but we'd already taken it. Every ship in the harbor opened up on him and shot him down, but he made the final sacrifice. He, do he dove into the ship with the frogmen on it and killed about 26 of them. Mm. So that was one of the tragic things. Uh, and one of our ships got hit the next day while we was bombarding. The USS Pensacola was bombarding on next to us, and she stopped. And when she stopped, the Jeff run a twin 18-inch gun. He shot it six times, but didn't sink it, just killed a bunch of boys. And they went out, circled back, stopped again, and we, we shot three uh, rounds of a 18-inch gun into that implant and a gun replacement and knocked it out. So we was in our little perimeter bombarding already. There was eight battleships around that little island, eight square miles. A lot of them. There was eight battleships. I don't know how many destroyers, cruisers. And it still took about three months to take the whole island. That fl famous flag raising on there, we, we left there to go down to Saipan, see what our damage was, and they raised that flag two days after we left. I celebrated my 20th birthday at Saipan. And then they said we had to go to the United to the States to get fixed. So, that was one of, the, one of the highlights of it. We went up to the Aleutian Islands because they said there was a supply base up on Paramashiro, which is right over Russia. So we went over there and tore it up. Torpedo boats come out and fired torpedoes at us and just missed us. That was one of our close calls on torpedoes. So that's one of all about the highlights of uh, March of 46, after, after the war. I signed on the duration for six it was three years or, or the duration. Well, I went ahead and served it for the three years. And while, while we was on, after the war, we made two trips back to the Pacific, picked up loads of Marines from several different islands and brought them all the way to San Francisco. Uh, that's one of that part of our episode.